Hello and welcome to Nintendo Pocket System episode 59 with myself, Matthew Gibson, and joining me as always, we have Jack Gorn. Hello, how are we doing? We're doing good, I hope. Um, <laughs> just another <laughs> bag, bag standard, no, bog standard episode. Bag, bag standard. Of we the got the, just a new term, <laughs> just made up, just, just for the pod. Yeah. After a whole month, we are really sticking to the um, bi weekly. Um, formula very well. Yeah, this one, this makes a change because normally it's like a month. <laughs> so... It has been almost a month since the last one. It's been like True. three weeks. Hold on. So like the last episode was up on the twentieth of yeah. last month. So that's like yeah. just in another week. That's nearly a month ago. Yeah, <laughs> that's not good. But we're here again, so. We hope you enjoy. Anyway. Consistency. <laughs> um, we've got... <laughs> I think last time we didn't really have that much news, but this time we do have... We are going to have a pretty chunky news section this time. Um, especially because I'm going to ramble on about one particular thing, but we'll get to that when we get to there. So, of course, our highlights um, are the new Detective Pikachu trailer starring Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Um, the Game Awards nominations, the Game Awards are of course going to be on December 7th for us, very early in the morning for us, and um, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, um, pretty much almost everything we know about the game has been revealed um, yep. through the recent direct, so of course we're going to talk about that, that and a lot more. Um, and we've got our general why we've been playing and shout outs slash questions. Um, we've got some questions. Yay! We've got one question. <laughs> well, I think we've got a couple, but like one will be integrated into a Smash section anyway. Yay! <laughs> Still, <laughs> questions. That's something. Um, Thank you for the questions. This is this is kind of embarrassing, but um, I am choosing the music this week, but I can't remember... Well, I can't even... I don't even know what the intro music is going to be. Um... So, oh no! Hold on, when? Yeah, because when was the last time? It's the last time. I believe the last time I chose the music. I have no idea. Last time I, I, I no, the last time Rich, I chose Rich was the music on. was um. Rich, Rich was on, so he chose. Yeah, so that was last week. But the last time I chose was all the way back in July. Really, that long ago? Yeah, the last time you chose okay. was. Three episodes ago, episode fifty-six. God damn. Okay. Oh yeah, because we had Ollie on before Rich, didn't we? So he must have chose them. And then, so, and then yeah, you, I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah, it's your ch- choice to Good. choose the intro and the transition um, and the ending music. So I'm gonna give some love to um, Zelda Chronicles Two because it seems like Jeff Keighley and the Game Awards don't want to give any love to that. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna go with the. <laughs> Battle theme from the very good tournament expansion from that game. Um, not, not even Sakurai wants to give it love. Sakurai has given it love, man. I think we got the music and we got the me costume. If Civil Blade 2 released maybe a year earlier or whatever, Rex would have been in. Rex would have been in and we'll get into this later. Yeah. But... Yeah, I think Rex still has a chance as DLC. Anyway, let us move on that... to... Do we have anything else we need to say? Oh, uh, we finally passed 100 subscribers on YouTube after we did. three yes. and a half years. 102, 102, yay. A... <laughs> Thank you everyone who has subscribed to the YouTube channel. Thank you also to everyone who subscribes to the actual podcast on automatic and and uh, itunes and google play and all the other places <laughs> what jack said <laughs> thank you um, um yeah but what, what are we going to do for 100 subscribers um, are we going to do anything they have our thanks <laughs> <laughs> no um well there's not really we anything if we make it to a thousand uh, then we'll give a, do a proper giveaway but that will never happen so Maybe at 200. Who knows? Uh, okay. But yeah, just again, thank you so much for subscribing to us on YouTube, as well as supporting us across all of our platforms as well. Um, 
while while we're here, um, if if you're on uh, iTunes and you've got the capabilities, please leave a review because we haven't had a review for like ages. So <laughs> that'd be cool. And then we'd get in. We might actually get into the ratings and and might get more people listening to us, which would be lovely. And then we can share our thoughts in actual getting questions. That, <laughs> so... that would be ideal. Yes. Um, yeah. Cool. Shall we head on to the news? Cool stuff. Um, right, so with that, let's move on to the next section. So this is the news section. As I mentioned before, we've got a pretty beefy um, news things to go up from the past month. So first of all, we are going to be a bit of celebrating. Um, Nintendo had their financial briefing um, for the second quarter of their fiscal year, um, which is due to end in March 2019. Um, So of course, some of the highlights was that for the past six months, so from... So I believe it will be from the start of April of this year to the end of September this year. The Switch has sold just over 5 million units, which pushes it up now to 22 million units sold across its lifetime, which means the Switch has officially outsold the GameCube. I Um, know, I saw this. It's crazy. That's Uh, pretty great. It's done really well, Mm -hmm. definitely. Um, (laughs) I think... Aren't they slightly behind what their like target is for the um, whole year? So they they predicted twenty million, which I think is a bit too ambitious. But given that we haven't really had any proper hard driven games yet, in the same vein as Mario Odyssey, Splatoon two, or Zelda, mm. um, I don't know. You had like Mario Tennis and but like Mario and, Tennis, I guess ain't, Mario Party. Mario Tennis ain't like getting the critical reception and says reception as highly, I feel. Yeah. Like Zelda Breath yeah, of the Wild was like iconic. It was greatly received. Um, the same thing for Mario Odyssey. This year we do have Pokemon yeah. which we just sell by itself, regardless of what the critics say. Smash Bros. Um, and then of course Smash Brothers, which is December 7th. Um, so I think they still have a chance. Oh, and then we got the Mario 2D pack. Um, in January as well, so I'm sure that will sell a lot of titles, sell a lot of units. Yeah, because well. they've actually got four um, new console bundles, haven't they? Now because of that, um, um, they've got the Fortnite one as well, with, with those other games mentioned. So they really are going to push for those sales coming up to Christmas now, and I, th- I think they got a, they got a good chance of hitting their target, mm. but I don't think it might be like somewhere. Not that far off of it. There's, st- maybe there's, there's, there's still a chance. It. I'll say that. Um, but not holding out too much as of yet. Um, let me see. So, um, some of the highlights. If I, if I if I find this thing again. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'll just say. It. So, Mario Tennis Aces, as you mentioned, was probably one of the biggest titles to come out in the last six months from Nintendo. Um, yeah. That has sold um, over two million copies already um, since June. So in about f- just over three months, it sold two million, which is yeah, pretty good going um, for Mario Tennis game. Looking at the graphs, is um, is selling quicker it's than it's... Mario Tennis Mario Power Tennis, which was on the Wii. Uh, uh, isn't it like the highest selling tennis game they've ever had? Well, I say since I Mario Tennis. Reading pretty much the only tennis series they have well they? they've had a few games for every console and from what i saw it was like the, yeah here we go yeah it's uh it sold basically double the, the, their last like tennis game that which sold really well um, I, which was uh, on the wii i believe are we looking at the series sell through that's it yeah that yeah one. um yeah so it's pretty much just selling quicker much quicker than um, previous titles, so probably will sell better than the original mm. and the one on GameCube. Who knows? Um, but yeah. It's still a phenomenal number, though, for mm. that for that game. Um, but yeah, so uh, looking at the top ten um, best-selling games on the Switch, Super Mario Odyssey still reigns supreme at 12 million units, um, mm. and then 
Marika 8 Deluxe follows shortly after that with 11 million, which has now s so it sold more than its um, Wii U original. Um, what else do we have here? Breath of the Wild has finally gone over 10 million units sold um, for the Switch, and then Splatoon 2 is the next one um, at fourth place with just under seven and a half million. So expect after Christmas that may get up to eight million. Then there's a big gap. Um, the next one after that is one to switch. That's at two point six four million units sold. Um, then from there's Mario Tennis Aces. Arms has sold over two million, which I'm quite happy with, especially since it's a new IP. Mm. Um, Kirby Star Allies has also sold um two point ten million. Um which is I believe that's also very good for a Kirby game as well. I think that's been the fastest selling Kirby game. Um Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, the port of the Wii U game, um has sold one point six million. And Celebrity Chronicles That's quite amazing. Celebrity Chronicles two, despite being fairly niche, I'd say, within the whole gaming sphere in general, has sold one point five three million units, which I think is quite impressive for a game of mm. that standard. Um, and also Octopath Traveler, whilst not mentioned on the list, it has sold at least 1 million units. Um, That's so crazy, again, the amount of sales. Mm, <laughs> this has not necessarily been a bad year for Switch, but for me personally, it hasn't been as exciting. Um, mm. Granted, I don't really have the money to buy the games anyway. Well, you've got a choice of over 1,300 titles from over 500 companies as well now. As I said, so... I don't have the money. <laughs> um, but it's more like... Um, there are good games. It's just games that I'm, I've am i just not very been interested in. terms of the Nintendo first-party stuff. In terms mm. of first-party stuff, I haven't been too interested. But in terms of third-party stuff, like indies, there's been a lot. And like, you know what? I do want to get there eventually. Like Hollow Knight. Um, oh, no. Story, Overcooked 2, Undertale, in Stardew Valley. There's been some mm. fantastic indie games on there. Oh, yeah. There's even more coming as well. Mm. Um, Ever, the last couple of days they announced that there's, uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, is, the whole series is coming to Switch as well. That was quite was surprising, that? actually. Yeah. Um, also, they mentioned about Super Mario Party, so they gave... Um, so in just a month, Super Mario Party s sold over 1.5 million units. In just a yeah, month. Yeah, that's that's quite impressive for how short a period that has been mm. as well. For like literally a month. <laughs> which, which I'm quite happy with because, like, I mean, you know, I think I think the reception have been more positive than negative in comparison. Yeah, to I the think I, games. overall, I think it is. I mean, the it's only positive, real criticism. Yeah come through is the, like the lack of boards mm. kind of thing is the main issue but then you look at it like you've got two different get type of game modes to play you've, you've basically you've got the four boards you can play in two different modes you've got eight boards eff effectively but mm. it, it's it's one of those it's like it, it's overall it's a great game mm. don't get me wrong and it's really fun multiplayer wise but to, to sell that many in that in in a month is re a real good but especially for Maribel itself, I don't, I don't think that series has sold as as much as we like, as like. Yeah, I'm other sure. Games. I'm sure that'll set records for the same franchise as well. Um, let, me, let me look into this, but yeah, that's cool. <laughs> um, I think that's the main just of it, at least. Um, they're just mentioning other stuff as well. Um. They are apparently um, still looking to promote the 3DS. Um, saying that though, in the I believe it's been in the last quarter. I'm not sure if it's, in, if it's been in the last quarter of the, or in the last half of the fiscal year. Um, mm. But apparently, the hardware unit sale was a million. Right. Which shows that it is dwindling. It's still there. Um, but I hope they're not going to continue supporting it too long. Because now that Pokemon is on the Switch, you don't really have too many killer apps anymore. True. On 3DS. Um, Other than Luigi's Mansion 2, well, well, sorry, Luigi's Mansion 1 being remade, that's about the only game. But even with that, we gained Luigi's Mansion 3 on Switch. 
Yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, yeah. So, like, e- e- even looking at 3DS from this year, the only big releases you got were Detective Pikachu, Wario with Gold, and Luigi's Mansion. Hmm. So, you've only had big free games for the system across the year. So, I can yeah. see, like, them being, like, slightly supported um, across 2019. You know, I am looking forward to the Bowser's Inside Story remake, to be honest. Hmm. Yeah, um, and I, I'll go back again just to play the titles, but yeah, I I don't know. I just don't want them to promote it, promote new titles too much. I just like yeah. them focusing like the abundant titles they already have. I I just got the um the sales totals for Mar- Super, Super Mario Party, and they have in comparison to the other Mario Parties. Mm-hmm. Um, the game the GameCube Mario Party Six we've got one point six three sales. At, in total, so it's Ooh. it's basically nearly be, beat the GameCube Mario Party straight away. <laughs> um, but the highest, the, strangely, the highest selling one was on the DS, huh. Mario Party DS. Guess how many millions that sold, Matt? Um, any, any guesses? I'm going to say 4 million. Double it. 9.31 million. That's not precise double, but I'll just go along with you and say yes. Um, yeah. <laughs> Christ, I think... Hmm... Maybe... Mario Party 8 was 8.85 million, just to put that into... Oh, that's compare right, it, yeah. Like, compare it with the main series. But every other Mario Party game's not sold more than 3 million. I'd say so... Mario Party could be, by the end... Hmm... I don't know, because Mario Party has only been out for two months yet. Super, Super Mario Party has been out for a month and got 1.5 yeah. million. But I wonder if that's going to slow down. That's the thing. After Christmas, I reckon they're going to be at least 5 million. That's going to be crazy. I'd, I'd say... Um, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably agree with that, to be honest. Yeah, she's maybe, about right. Maybe a bit lower, that. yeah. Um, especially after Christmas, I think that'd be a good hot title. Especially mm. because it's Mario. It's, because it's still a fresh game, there's a lot of people who might be waiting until Christmas to pick it up anyway. So, yep. especially if you're, you're just going to get a Switch for this sort of period, you've, you're going to likely pick up one of like Breath of the Wild or uh, Mario Odyssey. Yeah. Uh, but if you get a bundle, get another game with it as well. Maybe you want to get an extra game. Mar- Mar- I think Mario Party is a good game to pick up with, mm. with bundles. If not Splatoon, you know. <laughs> um. Well, yeah, so all in all, Switch is still being a success. Um, yep. It's already it's much good. more lively, I feel, than the Wii U. Um, to say it's outsold the GameCube already in its entire existence. And the Switch is already two years old. Yeah, I mean, how far will the Switch actually go? And will they. How long is it going to keep it out as an actual main console now is the question, isn't it? Because. Nintendo famously not had that many years with one console for a, for a while since the Wii, basically. But it's like the Wii, the Wii was a good few years, but that the they even that was like just because it was a phenomenal success in terms of sales. So it's an interesting one whether they're going to keep up for another two, three years, or maybe longer. But we we'll have to see now, won't we? But very interesting. Um. So in terms of like sales, Matt, like in, all software-wise, was there anything that like really surprised you in, in in seeing all those like graphs and charts and financial tidbits? <laughs> um, well, like the, anything that stuck out to me. Yeah, in particular. Um, I'm just curious. Not really. Um, they're just <laughs> graphs, really. Just showing the light switch has just been pretty great. Um, especially with the Evergreen titles. So that's between two... Yes, and... this this word come up a few times, Evergreen, in a few titles all over. I think um, Super, the Mario on the mobile game, what was that called now? I can't remember what it's called now, the Mario Jump one, whatever it is. Um, that's been called an Evergreen title from now on, the fact that they're going to keep adding more content to it continually. Wait, which one is this? And now, um, the Mario mobile game. Super Mario Run. Super Mario Run, that's it, sorry. Mm. Um, they said that's going to be an evergreen title, which they're going to keep putting content on because they keep getting more and more downloads of that game late at the moment, which is very strange. Um, but like you were saying, like evergreen titles, they've now moved on to the Switch and saying that the games like Splatoon, Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, they, they're being called evergreen titles. The fact they want to keep putting more and more DLC and extra content onto these to keep people going back to them. So it's very interesting. Mm. One 
one thing that did interest me in, in the look at the sales is um did you see how many sales uh Mario Kart 7 for the, for the ds got um i think it's just above 10 million i think like it still said that um i'm trying to find it here on the list but I, I, from what i saw they'd still sold like a good like so it was 10 million in total and then it was like extra 200,000 they got in like the last month or so hmm. but i also saw that the, the um the same for mario kart wii that actually got some sales about a hundred thousand as well huh and they, yeah and then people wonder why nintendo don't put their prices down you know on most <laughs> of their titles because they keep they keep selling <laughs> so well, yeah like people they got still that's the thing. Yeah, I know. Which is strange because mm. now they've just about to um, wipe out all video um, like uh, apps and stuff on the Wii. Like, for instance, YouTube and um, Netflix are going. Um, so why why people are still watching it and standard definition on a Wii, who knows? But whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it just amazed me like, how much these titles, even the really old titles, like, like, okay, it's Mario Kart. It's Mario Kart continually sells anyway, but it was just amazing to me how many sales they'd made from these two games from like what um, eight nine years ago now something like that <laughs> so but cool right so moving on um i believe you wanted to talk a bit about pokemon go yes um uh they come out uh, the news this week that um pokemon go is still still making a lot of money um <laughs> we were just reading before the podcast that in its entirety, Pokemon Go, ever since it's been out, has made over two billion dollars in in like the last two years or three years, however long it's been. Um, in the last month, it was announced that they made eighty five million dollars on Pokemon Go. And for, uh, I just I can't even compute that amount of money. Uh, I'm just like, it, for a game where you literally just catch Pokemon on on your mobile. I know I know they've had a lot of. Um, interesting events in the last couple of weeks they've had extra community days and they seem to be pushing week on week content and daily content now um giving you like research tasks to complete and things like that so there's lots more going on with pokemon go at the moment and lots of, i think leading up to the, like the new release of the game this friday for, for the switch they seem to be doing lots of like uh, conjoint events and things that are sort of around like for instance um they got the Meltan announcement, which they had in Pokemon Go, was catchable Pokemon, but technically, technically it was a ditto. But that Pokemon is going to be in the new games. So things like that, they're doing lots of linking stuff. And I think it's sort of really working for them really well, the fact that they're making so much money in a month. $85 million. I can't believe that for just one game. How how well do you think Let's Go is going to do because of like this sort of um, at least... thing around us at the moment? At least ten million before the end of the fiscal year. Wow. Yeah. That would be amazing. It is it, probably gonna happen. Pokemon is something else. Because I think yeah. I think Mario Odyssey got very similar within the same time frame. I think they got to. No, yeah, I swear they definitely got to ten million before the end of the fiscal year. When that launched. I think it did. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it did. So I think just another... which is great. It would have been um, three weeks. If they were to le- release in the same time frame, it's about three weeks apart. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think Pokemon will definitely sell at least 10 million. And, yeah, because, I mean, it's Pokemon, it's taking advantage of Let's Go. Mm. It's going back to Kanto. It's got Pikachu around the box. So, it's like, okay, <laughs> we know who that is. That'd be good for the kids. Yeah. I think you're right there, actually, saying that it's got a recognise like recognisable character straight on the box straight away. Mm. So lots of people are like, oh look, there's a Pikachu. You like that game? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you know, I, I I absolutely agree with you there. Um, because if not, if it's got a new Pokemon you've n- never seen before, like uh, maybe like parents and stuff might won't wouldn't recognise it straight away, kind of thing, and wouldn't think it's just some other game or something, but. You know, if you see a Pikachu in a box, most people know it's it's related to Pokemon or you know, it's around there. Um, but yeah, I think I think you probably are right though. To be honest, and the chance this game's got to sell 
so many switch consoles and things so it's it's a really interesting period of time around the christmas but especially whenever there's a pokemon game out you know it's gonna be crazy sales for some for, for nintendo and uh, let's let's see how it how it does but 85 million dollars we're in the wrong franchise matt we need to be selling mobile games where you catch random critters and things wrong <laughs> Can we do that <laughs> Yeah, we do. we shouldn't be doing podcasts. We should be doing like mobile games where we like just catch Pokemon, but not Pokemon, obviously. <laughs> we catch <laughs> so... um, Pocketmon, yes. Pocketmon, which is still Pokemon, but you know. <laughs> 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 don't um, tell anyone. Okay. Um, oh. Oh, go on. That does remind me. Um, just a quick one. Um, Nintendo uh, won a, a court case this week. Um, against oh. which I did forget. I don't know if we mentioned we'll mention this later on in the news or not, but um, they won a court case against a company that was um, basically putting out uh, hacked ROMs the on the Love internet. ROM, I believe. Love ROM, Love ROM. Mm. Um, Twelve million dollars, I think it was the the yeah. full toast in damages. So that's basically just going to kill off most of the ROMs on websites i think be honest especially nintendo ones anyway but um God damn. Yeah. so maybe we shouldn't copy them and then do a <laughs> pokemon go <laughs> um i think i remember talking to this with um Nantanjix from source gaming when he came on um because i remember around the same time the sites were getting taken down hmm. um yeah, it's true and to be honest I'm, I'm like i don't know but a lot of that was related to the um, release of uh, the NES and the SNES Mini mm. because Nintendo were reusing their licenses on a lot of old games which they'd never used before. Yeah. yeah. And also also with the, um, the NES library on the Switch as well, there's a lot more extra games on there which haven't been renewed for quite a long time. Mm. So those games that were basically on ROM sites because they haven't been using the licenses now effectively are under license and now they are basically breaking the law mm. so it's, it's um it's a strange one um uh, but i can there's sort of two sides to this because it's sort of it benefits and harms the community so oh yeah you can well, guarantee these these games are always gonna be on nintendo consoles but at the same time they're always going to cost more than not not paying for them. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not like it's not that it's more like okay so is Nintendo's property, so like just mm-hmm. be putting them out, out as ROMs when there are legal methods that mm-hmm. exist, either as classic, like the virtual console, and older consoles, what have you. And yeah, but on the other hand, it's more like preserving games, you know. Yes. Like, imagine if like they took down Mother 3, you know, but like yeah. for us, that's the only way you get to play Mother 3. If, yeah, absolutely. If yeah. there's another niche game, um, for the NES or whatever. That is pretty much impossible to find, but they have a ROM of it. It's not on like there's classics, it's not on the first console, it's not on any other legally if, if terminal no, thing. Yeah. Then that should no be allowed to be emulated, you know. Mm. Because that's not really taking away from sales. That's just saying, oh, we're just preserving this game, you know, because it's wrong that like it just doesn't exist at all, you know. But to be fair, I think the love uh, the love ROMs was literally just giving it out to anyone who wants to download it, kind of thing, which is a lot of the sites do. But this is a significant point that, that no one, I don't think any company's ever had a, this much of a big turnout to, like, in terms of money. Like twelve million is a lot of money, and no no company that's got loads of ROMs on the internet are going to have twelve million dollars just sat somewhere. You know, it's just <laughs> I, I think that will scare a lot of people off. And it's mm. at the same time, it's sort of ha- what I think it sort of harms is like the hacking community. Um, for instance, there's a, there's a Sonic uh, hacking contest every year. I think it's, it's coming in the next couple of months, actually, saying that. Um, that that runs every year, and that's all done from Sonic ROMs. And basically, they, they download the ROMs and they just take it apart and rebuild it. Mm. Um, if you can't do that with Nintendo games, there's no chance of things like that happening. So potential other games being created from those, for example, Freedom Planet and Sonic Mania, two like huge titles uh, in terms of Indies and and Sega himself. Those sort of things wouldn't be happening. <laughs> so without this sort of community of ROM hackers and things like that, so it, I, I kind of I get the reasons for it, but at the same time, I don't I don't want it to like 
put people off from doing it because I think there's lots of creative people that can do well out of, out of hacking these ROMs and having the access to these ROMs, but you got to have the right balance. And, it, and it's oh yeah, right, right that they won definitely. But um, it's 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 always going to be a difficult one to to choose either side. I think, but hey ho. <laughs> <laughs> Um, shall we move on, Matthew? We should move on um, to Detective Pikachu, which is... <laughs> oh. oh, my God. <laughs> which is... Oh, He's God. So fluffy. <laughs> it's, it's weird, because, like, despite it being a 20-year-old franchise, we've never had a live-action film. No. And I don't think we've really had a live-action We've, we've never really demanded on... it, have we? <laughs> <laughs> we've never had a live action movie based on a video game IP that actually looks quite good. Um... We never have. <laughs> I wouldn't say. Well, War... Warhammer had one a few years back, didn't they? That was the close, War... the closest sort of thing I could sort of. Movie. Yeah, they did have one. But I don't, I don't know to what extent the characters were similar because I've never really not War. Is it Warhammer? Yeah, I think it was Warhammer. I don't know. But I don't know. Weird. Um, maybe. I don't. I don't know. It's. I. I. What do you think so far of the D- D- Detective Pikachu? What, 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 when you first um, saw it, what did you think? I remember being initially jarred by the Pikachu because I mean that just doesn't look like what I would imagine. The first, yeah, the but, first sort of view, like he's he's completely fluffy rather than like when you normally see him in the anime and things, he's like very solid coloured yellow basically, so it doesn't look but, like fur. Or anything. But given time, I'm actually loving it because like if Pokemon were to exist in the real world. Yeah, that that is what that actually looks more realistic than it just being like just flat colors. I feel yes, um, yeah. even though it may look less appealing. The funny thing is that um, so I can't remember the artist's name. Let me try and find it now. But there's an artist that worked on concept art of um, yes. realistic Pokemon. So yeah, I saw this. He was today, actually yeah. hired to work on this movie. Um, yeah, here we go. Realistic. Um, this comes from Nintendo Life. Realistic Pokemon artist landed Detective Pikachu movie job after being discovered in Google. Um, so let me see. Um, artist so that... RJ Palmer, um, who actually works for Ubisoft San Francisco, um, well, oh, right, okay. that's what SF stands for, um, was scattered by the film's production designer to work on the movie. Um, looking at his artwork, they are very realistic. Like, they mm. too realistic, almost disgusting, but yeah. it's kind of cool. In a way, like too much like animals, whereas, um, like what you, you got, you got see... to try and it's difficult. You got to try and have the right balance to like realistic like looks to them, but at the same time keep them as Pokemon. It, it's so like that's yeah. what I think he's managed to done quite well in um this movie. Um, yeah, because like well, when when you're looking at like the CG CGI traders for the new Pokemon games, like Pokemon Let's Go. You know, like, mm-hmm. they, they still look good, but there's definitely, you know, there's definitely a disparity yeah. between it. Whereas, like, like when, when you see, like, the humans and, and then the Pokemon right next to them, and they're, mm. like, they're completely different designs and things. Whereas, yeah, I, I get what you mean. Whereas designs in this film, um, there's a bit more variety to it. So, like, Pikachu's all fluffy. Um, Psyduck is, like, feathered. Greninja's yep. slimy. Charles Greninja's Hopkins. slimy is, is really good. Mm. I think that's a, it um, does look like a proper frog. Okay, the the thing I'm loving about this is that one, it's it could be sort of seen as his own story sort of deal. So yeah. like, I feel like with a lot, yeah. they tried to adapt it almost one to one, and and I think that's kind of his downfall because of course with a game, mm. um, as long as like Pokemon, it can be hard to get the whole experience down into just one movie. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas if they focus on more plot-based shorter game like Detective Pikachu, um, yeah. which isn't as well known, but I think that's the right premise for this movie, I feel. Yeah, I think a side um, sort of swipe at the series yeah. rather than going full in, oh, this is Ash Ketchum kind of thing. Because yeah. I, th- I think if you look at previous animes that have, that have gone into the live-action sort of series, it, it never really pulls it off properly. 
No. Um, especially if, if you're a Dragon Ball like fan, don't ever watch the live action film. It's awful. <laughs> so, um, I think the only one that might get away with that one is, is like Last Airbender. That's not too bad, but it's not Ooh, exactly amazing. I haven't heard good it's... things about that. Yeah, um, it's not great, but it's not like the yeah. worst thing ever, you know. It's like, but um, I I'm hoping this is a it's something different to it. I think I know it's see with Ghost <laughs> Ghost in the Shell did quite well when that. But I don't think that's done. So maybe that's good, the sort of idea good, of it. Com- I don't think that's really done. Being I don't think that they're too good com- critically. I'm not sure. No. Um, I, I mean visually, it, it was like that. That was quite a good sort of film, but right. I, I like. In terms of how this this one looks, I'm actually really excited for it. I think it does look really realistic, and you could actually you could physically see that as an actual thing in the human yeah. world, kind of thing, the, rather than the Pokemon world. That's, the that's only really design fun. I'm still not a hundred percent sure on is Charizard, but then again, that's just from one scene. Yeah, um, I think. From what I've seen, he's, he's he, like there's lots of scales and things on him. He does look like a proper dragon. I don't know. It's, like, it's, it's, it's more like I don't know. It's just his face just didn't really see. Like the one scene where he's in like that like, cage fight, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's in the very last scene away. where he like tries to fucking eat Pikachu. I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem too right. You he's know. got big teeth and he's, he's a dragon and he likes. I know, to eat but like he, he just doesn't seem like Charizard. They just like. Jigglypuff. He should be. People, he people, should be sleeping somewhere. People were po- popping off about Jigglypuff, but I'm here just like, I you love, know what? Jigglypuff actually looks I love good. Jigglypuff. Yeah, I thought he looked amazing. I know. Or she. Um. It, it, it even gave like the, the angry puff like expression. I was like, yes. <laughs> One of my actual favourites was actually Mr. Mime. I know you don't. No. Like Mr. Mime. No. I hate he Mr. looks Mime good. Mr. Mime actually looks him. great. I hate Mr. Mime at Fuck all the passion oh my anyway. God. What, and like, just outside of, Oh, my God. Mr. Mime looks so great in this. He's the most useless psychic Pokemon in the world. And, like, even in the first, like, gen, he's just awful. But he just... In this film, they've just basically turned him into a giant skin face puppet thing, and it's horrible. It's literally... It, nah. I hate it. I hate it. Mr. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mime, the Pikachu. I like what they've done with like using him as like the bad guy, like the bad guy they're interrogating. That that works for the film, and that's quite funny. But the actual design itself, oh, bleh, <laughs> it just makes me feel ill, honestly. Oh. Now, now that you mention it, yeah, but like it, it, it's it, it could have been worse. It could be worse. Um... I don't know it could. I honestly don't think it could. <laughs> Unless it was like, they, like, like else I mean, pretending I mean, the be Mr. Mime. In motion. You know. In motion. Miss, the Pokemon do look yes. really good. Okay, it's I, more that's like when enough. people yeah. just take okay. it. People just like take it out. And like, yeah. But like, like when it's in the motion. Hand swipe, the hand swipe good. from like sad to happy has been going all over Twitter with like the gif and that. And oh, it's just yeah. I me... fucking love that. It's funny, but. Um... <sighs> The other thing I want to mention was what um, what, uh, what other Pokemon did you spot? Um, there's a lot. IGN put out a good video where they um showed a lot. So there's um in that very first scene, so like Charmander and you saw um Dodrio, but you also saw Braviary from Gen Five. You saw Compe yep. from Gen Seven. Compe, yeah. Um, Clefki. Um, and then I like in the in, I have to look for them. Um. It was. You saw Squirtle and Bulbasaur. You saw that. Yeah, Squirtle, um, Squirtle was hidden in the cage sort of section, mm, wasn't he? Like on the right hand um, side. I noticed him quite early. And then Rufflet as well. Um, I didn't see Rufflet. What was the little squirrel um, Pokemon as well? Um, the flying squirrel one. Yes, yeah, it. Yeah, the flying yeah, yeah, squirrel. Yeah, yeah, Moga. Because um, they were on top of the, the, the mm. like stools, weren't they? I I didn't notice that until the second viewing, so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think it's just um, the other thing I really liked about it is like they just giving a lot of love to like all gens of Pokemon, not just Gen One. Yes, yeah, because actually, yeah I mean, that's actually pretty really good. Yeah, like so, not only are you like focusing on like Pokemon from all ge- different generations, like the main game of Detective Pikachu did as well. Um, mm-hmm. You're also getting like a lot of references to other gens, like it, it, in the main person's room, um, Tim Goodman, I believe. Um, yeah. One of his biggest posters was a poster for the Sinnoh Championship, 
Which yes. is like, fuck yes, you know. Cinema's my home, basically. Lo- lots of people are calling that as a, a reference to say, well, this might be a remake coming. <laughs> but yeah, but like, so of sure. course there's a remake coming eventually. Um, we just don't Maybe know when. Maybe next year? I don't know. Nah. <laughs> oh, we're getting Gen 8 next year. There's no way they do. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think we're getting Gen 8 next year. Anyway, that's a different topic. Um, although yeah. it would be really, really cool if we got like, a Gen 8 reveal. In the I mean, Pikachu, that'd be sick. They did, they did basically just choose the most like um, popular, like of the Pokemon. I think like they Charizard, to, Squirtle, to, Pikachu, to Jigglypuff, on... and Greninja, mm. who is probably one of the most popular yeah, ones in like, the series at the moment. But but again, like this is only the first trailer. Um, yes, of course, yeah. So yeah. like, even though that's fine, you know, I'm fine with them having a focus. It's more like. Just the fact, you know what? Yeah, they're not going full out on Kanto. They are actually paying like proper uh, respect to like the whole uh, universe. Yeah. You know, like even, just, even just, if it's just little cameos or anything, that's enough. I just, I just realised why I didn't like Mister Mine. Yeah. It's because he looks like a gone off Goomba. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Yeah, he's like um, a multi Goomba. <laughs> yeah, so I have very high hopes for Detective Pikachu. It looks very good. Um, a lot of fun. What, what um, what other Pokemon that have you haven't seen yet would you like to see? Um, in it? I wouldn't mind this, um seeing Decidueye or Incineroar. I think yeah, that'd that's be true. very cool. Um, uh, maybe a Loan Pokemon. That's good to shout. Um, hmm. What about like? I would like to see Ho Oh. I would really like to see Ho Oh as as a like another feathered character, but I, I think, think you could. I think we'll definitely be well. seeing Mewtwo. So I wonder how Mewtwo is going to look in this. Oh, that's very interesting. So I think Mewtwo yeah. has quite an important part to play in the game. So. Oh, okay. Okay. Ooh, that does interest me. Mm. How um, could they pull that one off? Who knows? Um, anyway, so moving on. Um. Fans of Castlevania may be um, maybe aware of the Castlevania Netflix series. Um, recently, yes. got, recently got season two released around Halloween, and then season three has also been announced to be in development. Yeah, um, so I've, been... I've not watched it, but I've heard it's very good. Yeah, so it's, so it's been crazy popular all around. Um, but if you're more interested in a more Nintendo-centric series, there may be good news for you. Um, because according to the rap um, media site, Adi Shankar, who is the producer of the executive producer of the Castlevania um, Netflix series, um, is apparently in talks to produce a Legend of Zelda TV series for Netflix. Um, so this comes from like industry insider information on the part of rap, apparently. Um, and of course... Um, and a bit of Shankar teasing on his part as well. So in an Instagram post um, a couple of weeks ago, on October 29th, it said, I can confirm that I'm working with an iconic Japanese gaming company to adapt one of their iconic video game series into a series. November 16th, which is this Friday, at 1pm I'm going to announce what it is. I love you all. Thank you for following me on this journey. Telling you guys continues to be a privilege. So I think I sell the series is very highly on the cards because of course he's worked with Konami before if he wanted to work on Castlevania. Um, so I feel like um, if it was Konami, he'd just say it would be Konami. I, f- I think Zelda's most likely. I think. Metal Gear Solid. Nah. <laughs> yeah. 100% Metal Gear Solid. No way. Because... Mm. There's been talks of that being a, having a film for like years, and if this is a way they could get around it, I think that would probably be the most likely. But I would like to see a Zelda one, absolutely. On I, like, I, like a I, I'd place my bets more on Zelda, to be honest. Yeah. Definitely, I'd I'd definitely bet more on Zelda than Metal Gear. Ooh. Ooh. I think Ooh, so. Place your bets. Yeah. Place your bets, our audience. Um, Who do you think? Ooh. Um. Yeah, I have high hopes for this as well because apparently the Castlevania series has been quite faithful. Um, so I'm hoping um, for a unique scenario, scenario at least. 
mm. for this one. When, um, when when you say unique scenario, what what do you mean? Like so a completely I, new story, or maybe a completely new story. I want a minor adaptation, or say like Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, what have you. Um, because of course there's been manga of that. Um, but I wouldn't mind if like it took place in like its own story, sort of like how Warriors, how that takes place in its own place. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so it's like oh so. Um, this is like the TV. So it's sort of like um, so think of the CDI games and the TV show. Oh no, don't. <laughs> <laughs> so of course, like that's their vision of what the Zelda world could be, and that's kind of what I want from this oh, Netflix series. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because yeah. of course, if they do it one for one, then Link won't be able to talk, which doesn't, which isn't right, of course. Um, whereas in the CDI shows and the um, classic TV show back from the 80s, um, Link did talk. So I think that'd be kind of a necessity. I mean, if not Link, maybe from Zelda's perspective or anything like that. Um, I, mean, I mean, Link not talking is only in games because, like, you you are that character. You, you basically you take over that role as that character. So, but it it wouldn't work for Netflix unless I'm Smith unless like you see it from his perspective. I, I don't think it would work like that. But yeah, it's um, yeah, I I agree. I think it would have to have some sort of even a smaller talk in a bit like parts in it yeah it would absolutely mm. um moving on then um to the game awards now this is gonna be some fun um have we won have we won something <laughs> good one jack anyway <laughs> um so of course the game awards are probably the biggest um award ceremony in the video game industry um happening early december um, there's no December, big December 6th there. yeah so December 6th for those in America and it'll be December 1st for the rest of the world um, so of course there will be according to Jeff Keighley who is the host and creator of the awards um, there'll be a ton of announcements um, which, which I guess we could go into briefly now um, because they're announcing nominations today as well um, mm-hmm. but let's go into the announcements for now so didn't they? Didn't they announce Bayonetta two? They did. At the game they announced. They, didn't, they, they, they yeah. announced Bayonetta one and two for Switch last year, in addition to Bayonetta three, yeah. as well as the Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC. The they the did. They did, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. And I was yeah. like, oh, that's available right now. I was like, oh, Christ. Um. So, um, what I'm thinking, personally, um. We'll be getting a Metro Prime 4 trailer and a Bayonetta 3 trailer. Yeah, I could, I could see something like that. And then, yeah. And then if we're lucky, we'll get a port of either the Wonderful Wonder 1 or Celebrate Chronicles X. Mm, I'm not so convinced on those two, but yeah, yeah. I'd say. I'd... Why Not at the Game Awards. I don't think they'd get. Wonderful right. 101 wouldn't get announced at the Game Awards, but. Um, that's there's what I, there's that's, not enough people to know about it. That's that's the problem with, with like that. this is a chance um, to promote the game. Well, that's that's, that's the thing true. though. Lots of people know Bayonetta though, and that was why the Game Awards was quite a good place for them to announce it though. Right. It's, it's it's those players who have consoles who may like Bayonetta. Oh, well, they might be interested. There you go. Because this is the thing with the Game Awards. You've got the whole audience of every single console player there, and big games, small games, whatever. But it, you got to sort of try and choose the right audience for those sort of things. Uh, that, that's fair. Um, I don't know. I've, I'd say if we're lucky, we'll get a platinum game for Switch. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe some extra DLC for some of the other games. I, I don't know. Um, um, maybe Mario Odyssey, maybe? We could. We could see some DLC. Yeah. I think if there'll be one, I'm, I'd am i place my bets in Mario Kart, to be honest. Um yeah, yeah, Mario Kart. Because I feel like it, it, it may seem stupid now that I say Mario Kart is going to get DLC, but I feel like with Odyssey they just kind of want to hold their cards. Well, no, actually, no, I'm not really too sure if any is going to get DLC because I feel like right now we're well, probably going to be. Think what we've had, think what we were saying earlier about these evergreen titles and that they want to bring more mm. DLC to these games. Um, it just seems strange that they wouldn't do it for Odyssey and, they, like, in terms of paid did DLC. They mention, did they actually mention DLC specifically? 
So I think they just mentioned they wanted to keep on supporting it, which could mean just promoting it. True, true. Um, I feel like with the case of Odyssey, I think we we would have seen at least something now. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because like, like with everything else, they've always done it either like around their launch. Like ARMS confirmed to be game, game post-launch DLC. Same with Mario Tennis, same with Splatoon 2. And Splatoon yeah. 2 got like it's a proper DLC expansion within one year of its release. Zelda announced a season yep. pass beforehand. Sunblade 2 got a DLC thing. So I feel like if Mario Odyssey was going to get DLC, they would have said at least something. But I could but see it happening. Not, they've had lots of free DLC for that in terms of like the but costumes like, and things. But... Yeah, but like that's only costumes though. That's nothing really yeah. substantial. I can't, I, mean. I can't see like... like... It, it... Mm. It, it seems strange to me. There's not a game that they might not add like extra levels to and things like that. If you know, it, it's the only game that hasn't really had I anything think if, added. If a game, because like Splatoon Two, that's it for the pay DLC. I believe they said. Um, mm. But I could doesn't see... doesn't mean they won't release more though. <laughs> if, if, <laughs> if there's going to be a um, DLC for any game, I think Odyssey will probably be the best. Bet maybe. Yeah, um, I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But... Um. Other than maybe Pokemon. But... Mm, mm, no. Yeah. Just... Because like Pokemon's really been dating my end, and what can you really do with DLC for that? Um. Anyway. Mm. But yeah, I'm just looking forward to tuning in at one thirty in the morning on the release date of Smash Brothers. Um. <laughs> anyway. Um. So the nominations. So the nominees, rather. Um, when I was earlier today, um, for game of the year, um, quite expectedly, um, quite expectedly, you have God of War, Marvel, Spider-Man, and Red Dead Redemption Two all gunning for the um, game of the year. Gunning, oh. gunning. Well, well put in there, Matt. Well done. It's <laughs> anyway, um, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, um, Celeste, which is my personal vote, and Monster Hunter World. Um, but I was set up um, for the award as well. I think that's a good lineup. I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that's a strong lineup, and I think that showcases the best of what this year has. Yep. Um, I, I can't disagree with you. I think Monster Hunter definitely deserves to be in there. I think Red Dead's going to win it easy, but mm. uh, Celeste's a great. I had a great shout out there to be there. I think that's that's impressive. I am. I mean, like, Celeste gets my vote mainly because it's the only one I am voting for, because that's the only one I have played. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've if, played that win, if, if, that, if that actually wins, that would actually be the biggest upset, I feel. Spider Spider Man's a great game. I wouldn't call it game of the year. Mm. Right, right. Monster, I think, it's, personally, I think it's between, like, Red Dead 2 and Monster Hunter World for me. Oh, but, for you? Okay. Yeah, for me personally. But God of War is also a very good game. So. But I think that's because it's only on one console, it's kind of limited. So is Spider Man, to be fair. Yeah, again, <laughs> yeah, same thing. So, whereas Monster Hunter World is on Xbox and, um, PC, and PC. and I, I wouldn't PS4. really say that's a good argument, mainly because Breath of the Wild won last year. True. Um, You could say that was on Wii U, but no one really bought that on Wii U. Wii it's U, a Nintendo but... exclusive. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I, think I, I, Red, I think Red Dead 2 will probably end up winning. If Red Dead wasn't in the list, I think Monster Hunter would win. But, but oh, really? Yeah, but it's nah. been... Because it was so long ago, it was literally right at the start of the year that Monster Hunter came out. I think that might struggle for the Game Awards. I, I think if, so to get, if... To get the nominations, excellent for him, though, to be fair. If, if Red Dead wasn't in, I'd, I'd say God of War would win. Um, but yeah, yeah, so... Yeah. Okay, so... You could look through the nominations for yourself on the Game Awards website and also vote as well because you know there's nothing better than public vote. Um, yeah. So of course you got like stuff like best oh. narrative, best art direction, um, best best score, game direction, um, best audio, uh, best performance. Oh, game... I can see Detroit becoming human winning a lot of these awards as well because that. Um... that... Especially the narrative. The narrative, I think that'll probably win that one. Easy. Narrative, 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 narrative. What is 
So you've got Going Detroit becoming those. human. You've got God of War, Life is Strange two, Spider Man, and Red Dead. I, I I bet Red Dead will win that as well. To be fair, I think it'll be a re- I think Red Dead will get the biggest sweep up this year. Mm. Um, Octopath Traveler in the uh, best art direction. Mm-hmm. That's a great shout for them. Let's see what else. Um, so this is a Nintendo podcast after all. So we are of course going to talk about Nintendo. There's not really much Nintendo here. Um, no, there's not. Is there? So like you have got like a lot of third party stuff. You know, you got Dead We've Cells. We got Celeste. You got Celeste. Got Celeste. Like Celeste isn't a Nintendo title. Octopath Traveler. Um, on, yeah. So like you've, on, on the, the only script. games. Um, if I could get to the family one. Um, let me see. Um, it's family. So like it, it's pretty much Nintendo all around. You know. Um, you got Mario Tennis Ace, you've got Nintendo Labo, and you've got Mario Party from Nintendo, and you've also got Overcooked 2 and Starlink, which is pretty much, I'd say, mostly associated with Nintendo anyway. Um, mm. But outside of that, you've only got Mario Tennis for um, Sports Title, and you've got Octopath Traveler um, for Best OS, best Soundtrack, Best Art Direction, and Best RPG. So, compared to last year, we had... Um, a lot more, I feel. Mm. It's definitely a bit less. Yeah. Um, like even mobile title, I don't think Dragon League Lost is a mobile title. Um, well, mobile mobile title has got Fortnite and uh, PUBG in it, so. So yeah, that'll be fun. Um, you see, I, I I don't agree with that. That's a bit annoying. Oh, best action game, uh, Mega Man Eleven mm-hmm. got a shout in there. That's an interesting one. Hmm. I wouldn't put it in best action game. Um, <laughs> content creator, i.e., racist of the year. Um, oh wow! Wow. No, oh, I've got, like, that, that's that's taking a jab um, of an of over meme joke. Um, but yeah, I I, I don't know. Okay, so this is the thing. There's a lot of esports awards, which is like you know, yeah. esports is big. Best fighting game. Um, fighting game, okay. Fighting game, I'm fine with. Um, Dragon Ball it, Fighters. Dragon Ball Fighters will win. I, I think, think Dragon Ball Fighters it. will be yeah. um, the best fighting game. But hold on, let me get. So Dragon Ball, so that was the Blaze Blue, Soul Calibur, so, Street Fighter Five Arcade, and Blaze Blue. That's pretty least, good for fighting. At least best fa- family game looks like Nintendo's going to win something because they got. But like that's every not, single category. That, <laughs> so, that's not really saying anything because they always win family category. How you is know. Starlink in the best family game? I Wait, just don't. It's a family game. Is is it really though? Kinda Would you call it, it a family game? I mean, like they have toys. So... I mean, it's a single player one for one, and I just... it's more like yeah. stuff that you can play with your family. That's the thing. I, 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 yeah, but I, I, of okay. all the categories, I so, wouldn't put it in the best family. It's... So this is time. Okay, so hold on. Here's... Oh, if Mario Tennis Aces beats FIFA and best sports game, I'd be, <laughs> I would laugh my head off so that, much. That'd be great if they did. That'd be um, awesome. Okay, so can we all can we all just vote for Mario Tennis Aces to win, please? <laughs> I think that's, <laughs> that's because of the only one we've actually played. <laughs> can we do it? Can we just um, do it? Okay, so time for me to do a bit of rambling because I'd never do Uh-oh. that on here. Uh oh. So the game awards in general, um, I don't really like it being public voted or at least I don't like it being the because the, the, in a utopian society the mm. way I'd like it to be is that we've got one of the critics choice award um, and then the other will be a popular vote because I think the public opinion is important but when you know if, if it's just if it's just by popular vote then like I fear that like the actually good stuff may and that seems like critical as fuck, but it's like, say if, say Fortnite was up for Game of the Year. Yeah. You know, but like, that's putting it against, um, well-made, like, crafted games, like, well-thought-out game design games, rather than just one single mode, you know. Yeah. Um, like, of course, Fortnite does seem to deserve success, it's got, like, a lot of support, but... So, like, if you were to do popular vote comparing, um, like, God of War or Red Dead compared to Fortnite, you know, 
Fortnite will probably win because of its popular vote, but that doesn't really determine its quality, whereas I think critics have a better perception yeah. of that. Um, so I can't remember exactly, because I, I believe I read some where the last year's was like, public vote only went towards a bit of it. Um, I'm not too sure, though. Anyway, one of the bits um, that I just found out is that, so you can vote once every 24 hours, which is stupid. So, yeah. whereas one people, if they miss that, if they miss that thing, they will only say, oh, that's my vote for the day, that's it. Um, so, if you want to ensure your game wins, you have to come in for, like, almost three weeks just for, like, just to get much. And then, in addition, if you share your vote, it gets an extra boost. And it's like... So, you, effect- you effectively could have vote for Mario Tennis 21 times, then. Pretty to much. To win best sports game of the year. And then if you share it, then we'll get even like bumped up more. Can we do this? I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna keep this as a prim- <laughs> I, I'm gonna literally gonna do this all I over Twitter. Like, that. This... I, I'm very tempted to just boycott it in general because that is a stupid ass idea. Any, anything to beat FIFA and Pez, please, please. <laughs> because like, I don't know. I just think that it's stupid to be able to vote once every 24 hours. I should actually go voting. So like. Let's vote for Celeste. For it, it does. It does seem odd. I must admit, it does seem odd that the fact that you can vote every single sort of day, basically. Oh, but... no, sign in using Twitter. Okay. Um. No, I want to sign in from. Never mind. But at the same time, it's also quite ingenious. The whole like, if you share it, you get an extra boost. It gives the it's, game it's awards that more publicity. Um, yeah, I, publicity, I get why yeah. they do it, but I mean, it just ruins the authenticity. I feel. Yeah, you know, that is true. If, if you're going around doing shit like that, it's like, well, there's not technically by popular vote when some people can do it millions of times, whereas one may only do it once. You know? People are just going to make new accounts just to be able to <laughs> keep voting, I guess, or things like that. But like, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird. I, I think that, is a, like, that comes with most public vote things. Like Again, public vote, I feel, is still important because, I mean, it's the public opinion. That's fine. Um, damn right I voted. Um, <laughs> so who did you vote for, Matt? I I voted for Celeste for Game of the Year. I'm like, okay, Good. that's cool. Um, so I'll check in tomorrow to see if I could like um, retweet as well. Um, we're doing a live tweet. <laughs> yeah, I don't know then. Um, I, I think best. I think I will be choosing best narrative of Detroit. That is an excellent game. Wow, have so. you played Detroit? Yes, I've played Detroit. Oh yes. right, um, excellent game. Um, yeah, so I'll probably check in with Twenty Four Hours if to see if that holds up. So, like, sorry for going on about that, but a Twenty Four Hours. It was just an interesting way they've um, done it. I must admit. Yeah. It's just so you can vote once every Twenty Four Hours. Yeah, so I could still vote for other categories. So I assume I could just still vote for Celeste. Um, for every single like category, which is in. No, yeah. like, at, for, for, if I could vote for Celeste pretty much every day, which is like, no, that's not fair. You know, like, mm. I want Celeste to win. Don't get me wrong. But, but I think the fact that everyone's fair. in the same boat, though, I think it, it doesn't... But people may not know that. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine Does... most people will be going on, like, every single day to do it. But there will be some people that would take a for of that. It's a, it's a very nitpicky thing. Yeah. I, I just feel that's very stupid. And I want to make that clear. I'm very passionate about awards ceremonies. I, I, I agree with you. I do agree with you. Um, if, it, but... if it's running once every 24 hours, if that was it, no, okay, that sucks, but that's fine. But it's just the fact that, like, it gets an extra boost just for sharing it. It's like, well, it's already big enough of a show, you know, Fucking, you it, don't need it's to. It's getting that to... worldwide audience for that. That, that like, well, award, you, though, isn't it? Your followers are probably into gaming anyway, I feel. But what if there's. You know, other if not, you'd that... be like, express it. Hmm. But it's just. But there like, might be some people might not know about it unless it gets shared. So It's not about sharing, it's more about just like the authenticity of the folk. Could you imagine if Prime Minister or whatever was elected by saying, oh, you can vote for the Prime Minister once every day across this period. But if you tell five friends about it, that means um, your vote yeah. counts as five votes towards your Prime Minister. Yeah. Can you, can I, you I, imagine? You, you explain it that way, I think you've 
probably hit the nail on the head there. Well, the it's yeah. a stupid way because I mean I'm comparing to like a politics to a fucking food don't game bring scenario. politics into our podcast, Matt. <laughs> Go on. I mean, it's a real world. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's my stance on it. I don't think it's very smart. Um, like, yeah, it's cool. You, you can vote for a variety of ways. That's fine. So, like, even even with the variety of ways, I feel that would still be fine in a way because you're doing it across different platforms, I guess. But personally, I'd prefer it if it was just con- constricted to just one person per vote. Yeah, that's cool. Um, throughout the entire let's, voting session. Let's let's not get too hung up on it. I think okay. it's going to be interesting to sort of see what, how the vote ends up with a lot of these um, these titles and hey, these elections. It doesn't matter because Celebrate Chronicles Two hasn't even been nominated. <laughs> okay, so, so so yeah, so okay, so for um, best ongoing game, Splatoon Two wasn't nominated, which I think should because it got. Generally, amazing DLC, paid DLC, and it's still that got wasn't even in the um, family stuff, was it? Either I don't. Mm. Well, like <laughs> it's hard to say because Splatoon Two is still a game of last year. Yeah, technically. But for yeah. but for ongoing game, I feel it should have deserved because it got free DLC, which no one ever do does. Um, mm. or at least not most people. Um, and it does at least monthly free updates, which I think is quite good as well. I'm not sure about the other categories, I'm not too sure, but the thing it snub is quite hurtful. But, so not only Chronicles 2, if that released this year, it probably would have gotten mentioned. But, the thing is... 2 million sales. 1.5, but yeah. Um, <laughs> the thing is, at the last year's Game Awards, Final Fantasy 15 was up for RPG of the Year, despite releasing in November 2016. Oh, so, 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 so it's not a case of it being released outside of 2018. It's yeah. more of a case that they just didn't like think to put it in, and that kind of hurts more. Mm. Um, because it should definitely be an RPG, and it should have definitely been at least considered for soundtrack, surely. Um, yeah. Anyway, these uh, awards yeah. don't matter. We're going to do our own awards at the end of the year, I'm sure, and they'll be oh, much probably, more important yeah. than these. So, who cares? Shall <laughs> <laughs> um, we go on to the big news? The big news, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Heck yes. Um, Baby! As, as Matt's put in our notes. Yeah. Yeah, but that's with a comma, so it's not saying that's a baby of Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. It's just saying it's, it's, Smash it's Brothers Ultimate. Baby. No, that's why I put the common there. <laughs> um, so yeah, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, there was the Nintendo Direct about two weeks ago now. Um, yeah. Basically showed us everything we didn't know, putting the Grinch leak to rest. Um, mm. so yeah, so new characters, Ken and Incineroar, what do you think? Yeah, uh, it was a really good intro for both of them, just beating up Little Mac and then well, Ken's beat up Little Mac and chucked him into the screen, and then Incineroar enters as the new opponent. Um, both of them look good. Um, no one's really that bothered about Ken, by the looks of it. He's just Ryu too. Um, <laughs> but um, it was nice that he's got his own like special moves and things, rather than just like a carbon copy. So that there are like slight differences between him and Ryu. Not very much in terms of gameplay, but in terms of like visuals and things like that, they are slightly different. Um, Incineroar, I love it, all of his moves, because uh, he's based on sort of wrestling moves and like suplexes and things like that. So I, I like that sort of aspect of his character and he's added to the game. There's no wrestling character as such other than, of course, Pikachu Libre, which was shown in the trailer as well, um, has been added in, into Smash as well. Um, but yeah, I think overall, I think both those characters are excellent adds to the whole game. I think they fit really well. Um, there's that whole we can fight Ryu, Ken, and against other like Mega Man and things in the whole Capcom sort of fight, which is really weird. Um, but yeah, I'm overall pretty cool. I'm, I'm quite impressed with them. Uh, your thoughts, Matt? Or... Um, yeah, pretty much what you said, really. Um, I think. It was a bit heartbreaking because I think a lot of people were really hoping the Grinch leak was real. For those that didn't know, 
Um, it was a Grinch. It was, it was a leak that pretty much debated the whole Smash community just because they had some new Grinch leak um, assets um, yeah. for the Grinch movie in the background of the photo which showed um, banner artwork and showing seven characters um, being Ken, who did end up true, but also Shadow, Isaac, Banjo-Kazooie, um, Chorus Kids, Mark Ryder, and Gino. Um, of course, it was too oh. good to be true, so yeah. of course it wasn't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I feel like a lot of people were let down in cinema, especially because he was the last base newcomer to the. Yeah, um, yeah. I think so. It's, I like, it's a bit of like when you had like I think I would have preferred it if like maybe K. Rule was safe for the end because you had Ridley being the big one at E. Three. He had like Simon and Richter being like at the halfway point. I had K. Rool to like finish up the hype train because he was K. Rool was probably like the most requested character after Ridley, probably. Um, stand on in Sinnoh, which no one really wanted, but a lot of people were predicting it anyway. Um, I don't know, but still excited for him. He looks really cool. I'm loving his expre- expressions. Yeah. Um, he looks very expressive. And Ken, I think I'd rather play Ken rather than Ryu, to be honest. Um, it just seems uh, more flashy. Yeah, yeah, I kind of get that. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, but it's just like, was it really? Was Ken really needed? That's like, but like so that, sure. that's Echo characters in a nutshell, and I think yeah, Ken is quite iconic. Time. He, but he is the essential Echo character, and he exactly. always has been. I mean, so thing. yeah, I, I can get that. But mm. um, yeah. So um, just, just, just on from that, I, I just remember as well. Um. There's some extra assist trophies that's been added, and Guile from Street Fighter has also been yeah. added to this. Let's trophy. discuss um, the slaughter that was um, the assist trophy showcase. Yeah, Shadow and shall. Isaac aren't playable characters, so we'll pull one out for them. Shadow was meant was shown. Was the, year. He was the first one shown, and I was like, oh, this yeah. is not good. Uh, oh, not good. And oh, everyone's Isaac dreams just faded away. It was just, oh dear, bless, bless you. Um, um, who else was mentioned as a cis trophy? Now I've got to think about that again. <laughs> um, hold on, I'm gonna get out the the direct as well. We've always had, we've already yeah, had Shovel Sh- um, Knight in previous ones. So, so the thing is, I actually um, love assist trophies because they always show like the really off characters almost um let me see so they mentioned there's more um assist trophies than pokemon in this game yes which which i'm quite happy with because i i honestly prefer assist trophies over Mm. um pokemon anyway okay so let's see so we have um yuri kuzakata um which is from fatal frame made on black water from wii u um basically i really like her to be honest She, she carries around like a um, camera um, that she yes. used to, like take photos of the spirits. Um, if you're caught in that photo, then you're kind of stunned for a little while. And mm-hmm. it just has this like really occult atmosphere around it. I think that's just like, there's such a cool atmosphere around it's it. Quite, it's cool cameo appearance yeah. for that one as well. Yeah. I think they just, one of those like, it was quite, well, Fatal Frame was quite a popular game when it first yeah. came out. And then they had the, the Wii U game as well, followed it up. So it's nice to have a little inclusion. Yeah, mm. definitely. Um, so Isaac from Golden Sun. Isaac still looks great. I'm just going to say that, you know, just be just be fucking thankful Isaac's in the game at all. Whoa. You know, oh, man. I, I, no, oh, I'm just saying stung. this. He's stung everyone there. Oh. No, because as a Leighton fan, you know, I'd be happy if Leighton was just a bloody spirit. You know. But here you go, all whining about Isaac. I mean... But like fucking way forward, way forward is just a lion. There, please, as punch. That Shantae is just the spirit. I'm like, oh yeah, you know, just be glad like he's in the game at all. You know, be glad with what you got. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you, you know, it, it is painful. So like, of course, I'm not being like, oh yeah, you're wrong for wanting him. You know, I do share that pain. But mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm just seeing like some people just being like absolutely just getting up in arms about it. It's like, I come think- on, man. I think months Th- that's ago... a very small community, very small um, minority of people there. I think months ago we did try to get Arcade Bunny as a character, but he's an assist trophy. 
Which Did people actually want with... Arcade Bunny as a character? I'm pretty sure we t- we spoke about it a few months back where we no. wanted to we wanted to do it. I we wanted to do it. But it didn't I, happen. I remember so. um wanting it um uh, Arcade Bunny as an arms fighter because I saw that really cool concept art, but I don't recall actually wanting Arcade Bunny maybe as a fighter. Maybe it was Sam. I'm gonna blame Sam. Probably he's not Sam. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sam. Um, going forward, Black Knight. From Fire Emblem Path of Radiance, um, who people were wa- hoping would be Ike's Echo character. Black Knight looks sick. Um, he just walks around really slowly, just being a complete beast. Mm-hmm. Um, Springman uh, was a cis trophy. Yes, Springman was quite surprised. That, that also killed off character rumours. Um, um, it's cool that yeah. he's got a, a thing there, but I think we were all quite surprised he was a cis trophy there. I, I was quite surprised. I, I was kind of hoping Springman would be in, but then again, it's like, I wonder what else you could have done with a full move set with Springman, though. Mm, That's that is thing. true. Um, do you know what? What it's weird when I'm I see people um, would rather put or like are predicting that we get Twin Cell in Smash over Springman. Yeah. Which is just like okay, if you if you prefer that, that's fine. But I mean, if we're getting someone other than Springman, it's gonna be a Bingo because those are the two most like popular. Well, probably not the most popular, but the most advertised arms characters. Hmm. Um. Yeah, and I think since Springman is kind of the face <coughs> of arms, I think it'd be kind of weird to like have anyone bite him in Smash. Um, but Ribbon Girl would like as an Echo. That'd be cool. Um, there's um, there's been some interesting uh, ones not, so far not confirmed as assist trophies as well. Like um, Cat and Anna have been like removed, which was kind of surprising because they've been in the, like, the last two. Um, Vince from the Art Academy series, he's in as um, this trophy. In- infantry and tanks from from Advance Wars have been removed, or so far not been shown. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so you got, got Gal and you got Akira from Virtual Fighter. With his blocky appearance. Yes, that was pretty cool. Oh, he looks so great. <laughs> oh, um, God, I love it. Um, anyway, so like on the topic of assist trophies in general, then I- I'm just loving this lineup. It's such a diverse lineup. I mean, you you got like bloody Shovel Knight in there. Yeah. That's amazing that's cool. in and of itself. Um, in and of itself. Um, Squid Sisters, of course, have been already ad- added and confirmed. Um, I was like one of the first, I believe. Yeah, um, that's one of the first. Fromp, Fromp, Fromp from uh, Mario Sweet was cool. from Sweet cool. added. Um, anyway. Yeah. Um, so moving on, um, we got a look at the main mode of Ultimate, which is Spirits. So basically, yep. they <laughs> they're kind of a mixture between um, custom, custom equipment from Smash Four, event yep. matches. Um, and trophies and trophies yeah so like basically the thing with spirits is like trophies are out of the game which I think nobody liked I remember hearing that I'm like I oh fuck no but... I, I, I love people like the trophies and did like the like parts of it and collecting it I think that's quite fun mm. but you get that with spirits anyway but I think what it's just it's like a... I hope... it saves a lot of time from not having trophies mm. in that's what exactly I said, yeah. yeah um Although I hope that we at least get some descriptions, because that was always nice. Or at least some, like, saying, oh, this person's from this game. They debuted in this game, or whatever. Yeah. Um, just, like, little that, lines, That's all you need. Least. That's all you yeah. need, yeah. Um, in a way, I kind of prefer, like, spirits and ter- other than trophies, because, like, yeah, they are kind of boring, just JPEGs characters. But at the same time, it has, like, a lot of variety, like, for who can actually get in, you know? Yeah. Like, Game Explained did a good video of the um, top 10 most obscure spirits found. Um, there was one person that was, like, so niche um, that he didn't even have, like, he didn't appear in the game at all. Really? So, okay, well, damn. It was, like, this old, like, chess game that was only released in Japan or something. Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember. Um, but, yeah, like, god damn, I'm really excited. Um, because I know a good friend, um, Ollie Jameson, loves his obscurity in games. Um... So I think we're just gonna have Where's a lot of Where's Dosh the Giant? <laughs> if, he, if he's not a spirit, if he's not a spirit, that's gonna be a bit disappointing. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't know, but like the main thing is um, they power up your fires like custom custom equipment. So, so the primary spirits um, are your primary spirits, of course. Basically, um, they provide most of the stat boosts um, to your fighter in addition to something else. Let me see. Um, here we go, spirits. Um, yeah, so um, primary spirits equip, um, enhance the fighter's strength, um, and they also allow, and they also have different types. So there's attack, defense, and shield. Um, well, guard. What was it? Atar, attack, guard, and grab. So attack beats grab, grab beats guard, guard beats attack. So it's kind of like a weapon triangle. Rock, there. paper, scissors. Hmm. Um, yeah, you've got like a decent variety of spirits as well. Um, and then you've got support spirits, which allow for special abilities, which can be attached to primary spirits. So you've got... Um, let's see here. So um, it's like part, party feel from Wii Party. Um, he allows you to get an easier perfect shield. Um, the Windfish from the Legend of Zelda series um, grants special move power um, to be powered up. Um, Princess Shakara from the Warrior Land um, equips you with the Super Leaf. So there's a lot of like mix and matching. Okay. Um, which I'm very interested to like, try out and experiment with. Um, see, that's like the core um, purpose of spirits. Um, now, there are two spirits modes surrounding this. So, the first is just spirits battles. So, basically, these play as event matches where you play as a fighter which relates to the spirits. For example, you may play as um, an inkling with the Smurgle spirit, because Smurgle, of course, paints. Or... Um, there's a lot of other ones. Uh, they did a lot of examples. I'm, I'm sure our listeners have seen the direct, so know what they're talking. So, so they know what they know. God damn it! Yeah, they know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you haven't seen the direct, what's wrong with you? Go watch it. It's hype. Um, I'm, I'm liking this. Originally, I was kind of concerned, but given that we could be getting one from a lot of fighters, we could be seeing at least 500 minimum. Yeah. Yeah. Different spirits battles, that's, which I think that's allows a lot of for missions. a lot more. <laughs> yeah, which allows for a lot more replayability, I feel. Um, and they're quite different for each time. And like, well, so one has wins, one another ha- may have um, fire on the floors, one, another may have poison on the floors, or maybe having you deal with like a certain type of enemy, a certain combination of enemies. I don't know. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I think it'd be fun just like trying to get spirits on the go and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, I kind of, I kind of agree with you. I think I think I can see what they've done to sort of mash them all together into one and those three things into one, and it yeah. it does seem to work. And if it saves time and and gets the game out quicker, then fair enough, it's worth doing, isn't yeah. it? So, cool. um, shall we mention the other new character in this part? <laughs> No, because we're still on about spirits. I mentioned there were two okay. key modes. Okay. The other is the glorious world of light. All your favourite characters are dead. TM. Um, apart from Kirby. Apart from Kirby, who is our god. Who and wins the, the battle royale. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> um, Goddamn. And the Venture Mode was my number one request for this game, um, for those that read my Switch Player article on it. Yeah. Um, I just want an Epic Mode, an Epic Adventure Mode. I don't this think it's an it. Adventure Mode, though. It is an I just think mode. it was. I just think it was a trailer for the Spirits Mode. No, no, it's an, it's an actual Adventure Mode. So, like, mm-hmm. Sakurai Sakura mentioned it was an Adventure Mode in Direct, and, like, on the official site, it does mention that it is indeed an Adventure Mode. Okay. Because you got that like, cool. whole map and everything. But I thought that was all because of the spirits, though. Nah, so, I like, don't so like spirits. Spirits are sort of like on like a wanted board, you know. So you got yeah. like a selection of spirits. You choose which ones you want. You do the battle. 
and that's it. Whereas the adventure mode has a whole map to it, um, and they have like preset spirits. Whereas I think on the spirits okay. battle page, they're all kind of random. Um, right. But yeah. Okay. So that trailer alone, god damn, that, 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 that's if that's the only cutscene, if that's the only CG cutscene we get. Then I'm fine because that CG cutscene alone was just so. It's it's just what I wanted. Voice acting. Voice acting, yes, even better. You know, you got the foy, you got Marth, you got Fox, you got Pit, you got Zelda. That was great, yeah. and, then, and then when it all kicked in with the vocal song, oh, it was just so ah. Oh. I was, it was just good. jumping out my seat. <laughs> it was better than good, man. Like, good. I mean, that, that is just what I wanted from Smash Ultimate. It, a good it was weird. story mode. It was weird at first, and like, just like here's all the characters. I'm, now they're all dead. Like, literally, <laughs> did a fan very much. Um... But it was it was just like, well, you left with Kirby, and don't get me wrong, I like Kirby as a character, but. It, it kind of does that mean you got to unlock every character in adventure mode? Pretty much. Which, so I wonder if that's going to be like um, what Sakurai mentioned as the more streamlined way of unlocking fighters. Maybe that's it. Mm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. Even then, though, I'm still really looking forward to this adventure mode. You know. so, that, so that's that must be what? How many characters you've got now? 74, altogether? Seventy four, including cat. Seventy four. That's at least seventy four. Hmm. Hmm. I find so that they, like adventure mode maps. I think I wanted, <laughs> but like the thing is, this isn't some like half assed adventure mode. It's like, oh yeah, we're just doing it just to have an excuse to doing spirits battles. It's like, no, they got a full map, full interactive map. Um. You've got a skill tree where you can power up your fighters. It's sort of like an RPG. Yeah. Um, and you just... I don't know. It just looks epic. And you've got boss battles. This is probably where we'll, where we'll be able to fight Rathalos and um, Dracula. Yes. Rathalos was in the trailer, wasn't he? On, yeah. on the actual map itself. Mm. So. Yeah. This yeah. is what I wanted. I can't wait for it. I'm just going to bang this out day one. Oh, man, I'm so excited for this now. Um, but yeah, that was. You were well hyped. Oh yeah, it's like the thing I wanted most. Um... Like you were hyped for the best piranha plant ever, yeah. Yes. Um, so <laughs> moving on to DLC then. Can Can I just mention? I said on Twitter before the Smash like direct. There's got to be some sort of Nez re- reference for a character somewhere because there, there normally is. Boom! We had Piranha Plant from Super Mario Bros. You probably so, weren't you expecting a Piranha Plant, though. I wasn't expecting a plant, 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 uh, Piranha Plant, but I was expecting mm. a Nez-like character. So, it's like, cause it's, we... it's hard to like, really put him like, the same category as like Nez characters, though. Like Game & Watch and Duck Hunt. But that's the original game it's from, though, isn't it? So. But then would you say Bowser's a Nez character as well, then? Yeah, I would. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. But then you got, like... Because you had the like, weird thing of having Mr. Gamer Watch in Melee, then you had um, Duck Hunt Dog. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I was already thinking it would be. Um... Like what? I, I, really, I was really banking on it being Takamaru. Um, because Zachary mentioned mm. they wanted Takamaru in before, and I think he already has a moveset potential there. Um <laughs> Yeah, Takamura is like the um, mysterious Murasami Castle, um, which appeared as right. that one minigame in Nintendo Land. Um, oh, yeah, I'm with you now. Yeah. But yeah, um, if I can Piranha Plant, man, I'm happy he's in. Like, it's weird because I'm like, some bits, I would have wanted it more like iconic character, you know, like Gino, you know, something like, you know, but I think iconic like, Sakurai... insane vein as K. Rule. Um, Sakurai had an interview afterwards, and he mentioned like, "Who doesn't know yeah. Piranha Plant?" No, that's the, that's the thing. It's like, <laughs> well, I guess, but <laughs> but like, yeah, doesn't, doesn't mean we wanted him as a character. We, but, we you know. needed a 
what the fuck character falls from it. That was what we're missing. Because so far, all the newcomers have either been Echoes, mm-hmm. characters that were kind of obvious that were coming, like Inkling or Isabel, or highly requested fighters. Think... King Hyrule, for example, yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, how can, I can see what you're saying. But, um... but we needed them to completely out of left field character, and that's what Prana Plant is. And it's he's, weird. He's, pretty much he's got a free. massive reach as well. Oh, yeah, oh, god damn! Like so, like a massive reach. I think he'll leave him open when he when he use that move, but it just like, oh my god, he's just he's gonna Possibly. be so difficult to attack. Who <laughs> so, knows? Um, yeah, I mean the whole the whole plant like the whole pipe underneath him, and he basically moves it with him is quite funny as well. Though. I do like the <laughs> way they've designed him. Yeah. Good. <sighs> I don't know. I'm 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 just in love with it. I think it's just Sakurai just testing out his creativity. Yeah, um, maybe. But so. Yeah, so that will be that will be for free um, if you purchase the well, game before the end of January. After that, it. it'll be um, available to just download regularly, um, paid. We're not sure by how much, but. Um, but, yeah, her, but get it free. <laughs> speaking of DLC. DLC has indeed been confirmed to everyone's um, enjoyment because, of course, DLC was such a big part of the Smash 4's life cycle. Mm. Um, so, they've already set out a plan as well, unlike Wii U. So, we're getting... Um, the plan so far is that we're getting um, five fighters. Um, they yep. each come in a set, so each set includes one fighter, one stage, and a bunch of music tracks. Um... And they come in our fighters pass. You get all five sets for a reduced price of twenty two fifty quid over here in the UK. Yeah, which is a great price, really. Um, for five characters, it's not too bad, to be fair. Well, like for five stages and a bunch of music tracks as well. That's very good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know, and and we'll probably be getting free updates as well. Maybe even some new modes. Because that happened with Wii U as well. Maybe. Um, Maybe. I, th- I think it's quite likely that we could be seeing like at least some other things as well. Like me costumes, I think, um, could be coming in as well. Because yeah. I think that, that was, that, those were quite popular in Wii U. DLC life cycle. This is true. Mm. Um, right, so... So we're you're very hyped for Smash uh, if, if we haven't noticed. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, see, we got a question. I can't remember who from. Uh, but basically, they asked who were our predictions for um, DLC, um, like who will be in as fighters. Um, this is a this is quite interesting because Sakurai confirmed that DLC has already been decided. Um, the characters have already been decided and. Nintendo actually chose the characters this time, not Sakurai himself. Um, so that's um, led RBX, to... RBX01 on our Discord page, where he left it in the questions for the podcast. So, thank you, thank you for that. dude. Um, so, um, the, only one I, the only one I know for a fact, a hard fact, is we're getting another Fireman character, and it's going to be a protagonist from Fire Emblem Free Houses. I'd bet money on yeah, that. Probably, probably. Because probably I be. feel like Nintendo will want to um, bank in on that. Because I think with a lot of these characters, I think one theory is that Nintendo just kind of want to capitalize on marketing, similar to current and um, Smash 4's DLC. I think with what you're saying, like there's no Blade Chronicles, I think there's likely to be a character from yes. that. Um, uh, but because of the way they've worded it, saying they did basically didn't have enough time to put him into the main game, makes you think, okay, that's got to be a DLC character. Mm. The thing is, in, in my opinion, but... um, well, the cool thing is, so the Rex costume, the Rex me costume that's in, which I think is actually very well done, by the way. Mm. Um, so that comes as free if you get the Fires Pass. So of course, I'm going to get the Fires Pass. Um, but. I feel that it could be just a way to gauge interest in the character. But then again, everyone just pretty much wants Rex anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, the thing is, like, I don't think it could be... 
I think if we're going to get a Cinebreak rep, it is, of course, going to be either Rex, maybe Rex with Pyro and Mithra. If not, then I could see it being Elmo from Cinebreak Chronicles X. Um, that could be either two. That could be if we're going to be getting a new sequel to Cinebreak Chronicles X, or if we're just getting Cinebreak Chronicles X over to Switch. But I don't think that would be very likely. So if I had to go to one of the two, I'd say Rex, probably. Okay. Okay, um, so that's two characters. Um, hmm. It's hard to think, really. Um, yeah, because there's just so many characters already in this game. It's like... But it's like... you got, it, like, I, so many. Are okay. we taking, like, if they've got a spirit or assist trophy, we're going to say they're not going to be a See, DLC character? That, that's what I was going to say. Do you think they'd actually add, a D, add an assist trophy? Because I think spirit's characters are still on the cards. Because in Smash 4, we had trophies of Mewtwo and Lucas before they were even announced for DLC. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like the Spirit doesn't necessarily deconfirm then. But saying that, because of course we've seen like K. Rool Spirits, we've seen Wii Fit Trainer Spirits. Saying that though... I'm trying, I'm trying to think of all the game series we've got included and like what else could be the like, one... repre- represented, I guess. But The ones I'm hoping for I'm hoping for some Rhythm Heaven representation. We've got them as spirits. Mm. You know, we've got like Christ Joe, we've got the chorus kids as spirits. But I'm just a hoping few... that we get a playable fighter from that. A series. few people mentioned like Wolf Link with Midna, but I don't mm. know that one. I wouldn't say no, but I don't know. I I'd prefer Imper. If there's one more Zelda character, I would prefer it to be Imper. Um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know about Impa. I mean, she, she's good in Hyrule Warriors, don't get me wrong, but I, I just don't think... We've... I don't know. It's a weird one. It's a weird I one, feel like... It? I don't know. Um, that, that, the other one, few... oh, on. on that was, what about the um, characters from Breath of the Wild, the champions? Mm, no. Then I, then I suggested, what about Prince Sidon? Would he really have a good moveset, though? I don't know. That's the thing. But I, I just it would be a good Breath of the Wild I, representative. Though. I wouldn't say no, but well, you've already got Link. That's the thing. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I think I don't think we're going to be getting a Zelda character. I think we're getting Sans. <laughs> 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 Fucking ah! Uh, if we're just for the OST, yeah. So, since Nintendo are designing it, I could pretty much say um, Rip to Joker from Persona 5 getting in. Yeah. But if he does get in, holy shit. Mm. Um, Professor Layton is my number one pick that I want to get in, but I don't think he is very likely. It's not. not as, I'm not uh, as confident now as, as the previous times we mentioned it, if I'm no. honest. But, um, um, yeah. That would be a good representative, though. You know, he's a. He's a um, Minecraft well Steve. Character. Minecraft Steve actually has a good chance. Minecraft That's the world Steve. we live in. Banjo Kazooie still needs to be in this game by um, far, but no, not from no. Minecraft Steve. <laughs> I what? would rather put in. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I'd rather put in Banjo Kazooie, but considering Nintendo choosing the characters, Steve has a higher chance than Banjo. You can't you deny it. You wouldn't choose Steve over Banjo Kazooie. You wouldn't choose, if you had the, but Nintendo if you had the would. Choice of Nintendo there. would, because what's more popular, Minecraft. Uh, <laughs> this is true. It's true. It's not the future like, we want, but goddamn. But Hero Brian or a zombie. Hero Brian. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, the bad. I don't know, the Mike. bad version of Steve. Um, Minecraft. Don't of worry. Of course, like I think everyone on the planet would prefer Banjo because Banjo is an actual character whereas Steve is just a bunch of blocks. I um, think you could do more with a, like, Banjo because of his moveset as well. In, exactly, in, in, yeah. But, um, um, but they are very similar to like the Duck Hunt dog, so... They're not... And, they're not really... They're, they're kind of similar in a way, but they... Because they, they have both their... have birds and it ends at that. Well, they, the fact they got two characters who you basically use both... You'll be used both parts of the... Yeah, but they're two separate one-player characters, aren't they? They're, even though they follow each other. Whereas at least like uh, Duck Hunt Dog and the, the right, Duck right. do have their own sort of... like Both have moves together kind of thing, which which work mm. 
entwined kind of thing. Yeah. But I just think like maybe Banjo Kazooie and that and Duck Hunt Dog is maybe too similar. That maybe that's why they not decided so far. No, but... it's, if it's anything, it's probably going to be licensing issues, which may be weird. Well, but I think okay. Sakurai wants to focus on Japanese games. Well, if they, if because they, like, managed... okay. So like, if if we bring up the list. If we bring up the if whole they, roster, if they manage to get like three Capcom characters, a but Konami they're all Japanese. Character, but they're all Japanese. Character. So if we look through the list, okay. So starting from number one, the Mario, going through to the end. If we look at characters that were created outside of Japan, um, we've got Dark yeah. Samus. Um, if we oh, continue going down, I suppose Mario, yeah, yeah, because that's actually Fox. studios. Star Fox, no, Star Fox was created by Shigeru Miyamoto. Shigeru Miyamoto. Yeah, so Star Fox wouldn't count. I'm, just, I'm trying to think of other, other characters which were based, based on America. Um, well, not based on uh, America, created in America. Yeah. Diddy Kong, because that's from Rare. Yeah. Well, that'd um, be UK. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, well I'm, I'm not Western, you know, outside of Japan. Yeah, yeah. Um,. That'd be another rare, rare, rare representative kind of that they've already got, but yeah, it's. Uh. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I would much prefer having banjo in King, King K. Rool as well, I suppose. But yeah, King but... K. Rool, and I think that's it, because literally every every other character was created oh, I, by, I someone, pirate, by someone by someone. What a pirate Goomba! Pirate Goomba, that'd do. Fuck it off. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like I think Sakurai, um, um, and I think like there was definitely an interview one time before they want to focus on Japanese characters. So Tales. that's a small, that's a small hope. <laughs> Tales was a world of mind seeing. Um, it's just weird that they've not mentioned Tails anywhere, and like Knuckles is a, is this trophy, and so is Shadow, and it seems strange to me. Tails should have been assist over Knuckles. Yeah, I I, I would agree. Mm. And it seems, but I suppose Knuckles is easier so like, to make as as a fighting character. I suppose. So but, yeah. literally, you only have out of the seventy four characters, including Pokemon Trainers One, yeah. you've only got three that are created outside of Japan. So Sakurai definitely focuses more on Japanese well, um, yeah. things. It's like if I think out of all of them, though, I think Banjo is probably the most requested third party character. Mm. Especially because he probably has a very strong the, title. The most and... relevant, to be honest, I think the fact like he's been in really in terms, but he's been in Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, and Did- Diddy Kong Racing as well. You know, it just it just thinks it's, makes it's me think. It's not really, I guess, more re- relevant to Nintendo's history. Yeah, that's what. I but mean. in terms like today, I wouldn't say so. No, of course. Um. Band, the last Banjo Kazooie game came out ten years ago, which was, <laughs> and nuts was and bolts. Okay. That is so <laughs> depressing. Um. Okay, so 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 I'm definitely I'm definitely gonna bet a Fire Emblem Three has this rep. There's no way they're not gonna do a new Fire Emblem character. There's no way they're not gonna get the chance. They've got like to twenty now. They're all blue haired and swords. <laughs> so... Um, Corrin's white haired. The same with Robin. Still got a sword. Red haired. Um. Yeah, so I think, what, I, think the, I think the female <laughs> lord in Three Houses um, actually has an axe. Oh, that's So cool. I'm hoping we could at least get that fully some weapon. To, Does she um, have blue hair? To. No, she has blonde hair. Ah, uh, that's all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, they're definitely yeah. going to be doing a final. Um, I, I think we've, see... we've gone through a few characters anyway, okay, and I yeah. think that, that pretty much answers the uh, I think that's uh, enough. Question. Anyway... Smash Brothers Ultimate, nice. Can't wait for it. Um, I, I'd never have known. <laughs> let's end it there. Uh, so with that, let's move on to our next section. So this is our final section of the podcast right now. Starting us, <laughs> starting us off, we've got a question from Martin Thompson. Um, who asked, what is your Pokemon Ultimate Dream Team? Wow. Um... <laughs> who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I'm trying. I'm trying to think this sort of through the last couple of days, and I just like I can't really work it out. But I think a Greninja would definitely be in there. Greninja would definitely somewhere. be in there for me as well. Um, Desiree and Apollyon. Those would definitely be two others. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm a big fan of Magna Zone. He doesn't fair. have that many weaknesses, so I do um, like him. I've I've got to apologize um, because I haven't really thought too deeply about this, and now I'm just like kind of struggling to think about struggling to think of Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'll, I'll get up. Oh no! Ah oh, no! I'm, I remembered. I was gonna get up um, Pokemon Sun, but then I remembered does in the Elite, Elite Four when I last left off. Um, because I'm mainly from like Gen One playing Pokemon and Gen Two, I think I think I've, like lots of my favourites are in those sort of eras. But I just don't I don't know. I I, I do like Blast Toys, but we've already got a Water type in with Greninja who does the same thing. So I think I'd I'd put Charizard in. If there, if I could choose selection. between if I, if I only had like one of each type, then I'd probably. Choose Empoleon over Greninja because I have more nostalgia for Empoleon. Yeah. Um, because... I think I think when I did speak to him, he did say that he wanted six Dark Rise. So I was like, okay, <laughs> if that, that's kind of cheating, but yeah, okay. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um. I'm trying to think of like more newer ones in terms of like a low end Pokemon and stuff like that. Mm. Um, I am a big fan of Sandshrew. I don't know why. I, you just I just like his design. So I, I think I would, would probably put a Sandshrew in there just because I like a good ground type. Mm. But there are better ground types. So <laughs> totally. Um, um... But I just I just like Sand Slash's design. I think he's just quite a cool little. A lot, his original red and blue sprite was horrible, but like ever since it's like been quite cool. So, um, hmm. it's got to be someone else you think of, man. Well, I'll go through like types, like maybe like dark type or psychic types That's or things what, like that. I, I, I'm just going through the, like the whole list. I know, I know my sun team, my Pokemon sun team. I know, I think Mudsdale is definitely in there. Okay. Um, and I believe. A lone Raichu is in there as well. Um, Mimikyu's quite cool for um, things at the moment. Mim- I think Mimikyu he's... would be cool, yeah. Yeah, um, he like the actual battle t- like techniques is quite cool. Mm. Having that extra move is always in- interesting in in all the battles I've seen with him in. So mm. lots of people like playing him. Um, but um, fucking Tyrantrum from um, Gen Six. Okay. The big T Rex one. Oh, yes, I've sick. got a shiny one of him, and he's very cool. I like um, that. <laughs> in terms of flying Pokemon, I'd probably go with Staraptor again because Sinnoh. You know, um, got to yeah. represent. Um, it's it's either Pidgeot or Ho Ho. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Who else is on? How many Pokemon have we actually said now? I don't know. Like, surely well, six we, should we've be got on a good, this. We've got a good number. Um, yeah. I would Tyranitar. like to just like sit there just one day. Oh, Tyranitar is a good shout. Tyranitar and um, oh, who's the ground dragon type who's in Pokemon? Um, ground dragon. Yeah. Garchomp. Garchomp. Yes. Yes. I really like Garchomp. I think I love his design as well. It's like a a, a land shark thing. It's great. So, <laughs> so that'll do. <laughs> um, Electivire will be pretty sick for electric types. Um, Lucario maybe. I've already said Magna Zone for mm. electric type really. Yeah. So. Um, Garchomp. Yeah, Met- Metagross Garchomp is the other one. You could use as another great, decent ground type, so but he's also steel as well, so mm. yeah. No, Metagross. That's no, he's psychic, isn't he? Yeah, I think I was you, say... can, you can have Earthquake as one of his moves, and I'm thinking that there, at least not right, is it? Um... Okay. I was thinking Pokemon Go. That's why. Yeah, probably Star Raptor for flying for me. Um, hmm. Fairy. Fairy. 
Yeah. As in very liquid. No, very tight. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't could really say know. Very, very liquid. Probably we were very liquid. Oh, pro- probably Gallade. I'd, I'd probably get Gallade in there. My, my team will yeah. probably consist of a lot of Sinnoh Pokemon. Mm-hmm. I gotta represent. Um, if not Gardevoir, I find Gardevoir quite cool to be honest. I think, I think for like dark types, I probably have Umbreon because Umbreon's like... pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you don't really have a lot of dark types though, do you? No. I mean, Tyranitar is the big one that sort of mm. pokes out there, but. Him mm. <laughs> with the fucking Deli Bird. That's what I need on my team. Deli Bird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um. Okay, I think I think we've probably covered that, a lot. That's about, enough, what, yeah. That'll do. I think that'll no, choose out of those lot that we mentioned. That's probably the best ultimate team. Mm. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think we kind of cheated, but I think it counts. <laughs> right. Um, right. Shout so outs, Matthew. Shout outs. Um, my shout out is um, to skip the tutorial on YouTube. Um, before I've given shout outs to other um, essay type. Um, channels on YouTube, for example, the um, what was it? The Inside the Super Scope series for Game Explain, as well as uh, Mark Brown's um, stuff on his channel, yep. um, um, Game Makers Toolkit. Um, but the skip the tutorial, skip the tutorial is another one like that. I'm not nearly as big. Um, one of the series he does is. Um, boss battle breakdown um, that's taking part all different kinds of boss battles this gaming for example um, a couple of weeks ago he did one about um, Splatoon 2's final boss comparing the DG Octavia between both games between Splatoon 1 and 2 and I thought that was very cool um, the reason why he did uh, one about why we need to hate our Pokemon rivals Okay. Um, and I think, and last week he did one about what makes a great Pokemon gym leader as well. Um, but he does also do a lot of other cool videos as well. Um, like for example, seven platform mechanics you need to play, seven RPG systems you should pl- be playing right now, stuff like that. All very cool stuff. Very well <laughs> thought out. I just, I just really like analytical stuff about this. Another one actually. Um, is design doc. I'll, I'll put a shout in for that as well. Um, he also does a very good analytical videos as well. Um, so definitely check those two out. Um, because skip the tutorial for the quality of work. He's not even at 10k subscribers, which is weird. Um, well, he needs to change that. So go subscribe. Yes. Um, and Jack, what about shout outs for you? Um, just a real quick one, um, as we normally shout out from anyway. Uh, N- Nintendo Players UK have been running a Tetris Poyo Poyo tournament, which I was very kindly invited to, in to play. Um, but yeah, I, I we've doing a lot like, of two a double bracket sort of thing. So I, unfortunately, I lost in the second round, but I'm still in the losers bracket at the moment. So I've got a chance of still beating someone else or losing to someone <laughs> else miserably. So you should be fine. Yeah. It's, it's been fun to pick up uh, Tetris Puyo Puyo again. Um, that's a game which I've really enjoyed when I first played it, and now to come back to it and play a few more games online with a few more people, it was it was quite interesting, quite fun. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to say a uh, thanks to Nintendo Players UK for running that, and particularly that is uh, FASD and Jen from uh, North Wales, I believe, from Nintendo North Wales. So yeah, thanks guys for running it all, and you're doing a great job, and hopefully we can get everyone else who hasn't had their matches yet to sort it out so I can have my next game <laughs> but yeah and uh, thank you Trodge for the uh, question and also for the other dude for the question uh, which is RBX01 on our Discord if you haven't uh, like joined our Discord yet check out the description below I'm going to try and be a bit more um, well a bit more open on that and hopefully you have a bit, bit of more content and things happening in the next couple of weeks because I've also built a Hampshire Gaming Hub one uh, Discord recently, so hopefully we can start like growing some communities and playing some games together and things like that. So that'd be cool. So shout outs to those as well. So the Discords of Hampshire Game Hub and the Nintendo Podcast System. Cool. Right. Um, 
So that pretty much wraps it up here. Apologies for the lack of um, while we've been playing section. We delved too deeply into the new section. We'll put it first next episode, so then we can <laughs> talk about games and no. stuff. <laughs> um, just wanted to say, though, I hope everyone really enjoys the new Pokemon game, which come out this Friday time of recording, because we're recording on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I hope you all really enjoy it. If you want to add either me or Matt on uh, um, on Switch, I'm sure if we just tweet us, and you can, we'll gladly send them over, and you can trade and battle and stuff like that. So that'd be fun. Oh, or if you need to check it on the discords so mm-hmm. yay um yeah i think that pretty much wraps it all up for matthew um, uh, where all can right. people find you um, on the internet well just a bit before that um just a bit of housekeeping i guess housekeeping uh, <laughs> um so where can you find the podcast you can find it on youtube um Podomatic, spotify itunes and Google Play, um, so in a lot of Play. places now. Um, in terms so you've of got no media... excuses not to listen. <laughs> Tell your friends to listen. Please share the podcast. Please Thank do. You. And um, leave a review. <laughs> um, smash that like button. Can we get to 10k likes? Who knows? Um, Probably not. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> Um, social media wise you can find us on Twitter and um, Facebook and podcast system just look for there we also have a Discord server which is probably as dead as my hope for Lakes and getting into Smash Brothers Ultimate uh, um, <laughs> the true <laughs> very true at least um, you accepted it now <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah that's about it um, where can they find you where can you find me? Um, on Twitter, at A-C-I-B-B-O. Cool. Um, Jack, where can people find you? Hello, I'm Jack, also known as Gorney7789, which is available on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and loads of other places on the internet. Um, I did a nice video on Deltarune, which was the, night, like, the second Undertale game to come. Um, I did a video about that. It's all on my channel, and I really liked how it came out at the end of it. Um, I, I was a little bit critical of myself while listening to it, but I think overall, I think I've really enjoyed making that video. So it'd be cool if you could check that one out and some other videos on my channel. Like there's loads of Pokemon Go stuff at the moment and things like that. Um, there's one about uh, hating Mr. Mime. So hopefully, if you'd like that sort of thing, if you're really into the new Pokemon film that's kind of be coming out, because Mr. Mime is horrible. <laughs> so, um. Yep, but that's everything of mine, all at Gorney7789. And please just come message us and we'll chat with you and stuff and play games and stuff and things. Yay! <laughs> that's everything. That is the episode then, pretty much. Um, to close us out, I will. I am going to be choosing Life Flight, which is the vocal theme for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Good God, Good it was. choice. Good what choice. A tune. Christ. Um, yeah, so with that, thank you so much for listening to the Tell Podcast System episode 59. Um, 10 more until the magic number. Um, we hope you all enjoyed and happy gaming. Happy gaming! Against the cold of the night
first breath blossoming in a soil